Hello, everyone. We're at the University of New South Wales, and I'm Norman Wildberger. This is question 23 from chapter 1 of the Linear Algebra Notes. It's a problem involving vectors and linear combinations, or affine linear combinations, on a segment. It's actually a question that uh, is in a direction which is very useful for a, a lot of things, in particular for physics. All right, so let's have a look at this question. So let A be the point 2, 3, minus 1, and B be the point 4, minus 5, 7. These are two points in three-dimensional space. And the first thing that we're asked is to find the midpoint of A and B. In other words, to find the point, which is exactly halfway between A and B. Then we are asked to find the point Q, which is on the line through A and B, such that B lies between A and Q, so it's on one side of A and B, and such that BQ is three times as long as AB. Okay, so there's a general sort of setup here that I want to talk about uh, first, just in, in terms of sort of a general picture. So here we're working in three-dimensional space, so I'll represent that with our familiar axes. And we have two points. A and B. All right. We'll just represent them uh, by these two dots. And associated to those two points are their coordinate vectors. So the vector from the origin to A, we're going to call that the vector little a. And the vector from the origin to the point B, we're going to call that the vector little b. Okay, so we have to be a little bit careful sometimes to distinguish between the points themselves and the vectors, coordinate vectors, that they determine. Okay, so for the first question, what we're interested in is looking at this line that joins A and B and finding on that line the midpoint. So we'll say a point M which is exactly halfway between, uh, between them. So in general, how would we go about doing this? Well, the basic idea is here is to, is to use vectors, okay, and to get grip on the vector that uh, is going from A to B or from B to A. Let's say the vector from A to B. Let's have a look at this vector here. Okay. So the vector A, B is obtained by taking the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B and taking the difference. So this is obtained from the difference of the coordinates of A and B. Okay. Now let's call that vector something. Let's call it, uh, say, C. So let's let, uh, let's give this a uh, name. Let's call it C. Okay. So that's the vector C. So now we have the vector A in this direction, vector B here, and the vector C here. So in that kind of framework, we could say that C is equal to, in terms of these vectors, it's final minus initial. So it's B minus A. So this is a very convenient way of working with vectors that the vector from A to B is obtained by taking the difference between the coordinate vector of B and the coordinate vector of A. That's another way of saying how we get this uh, vector. All right, so now if we want to get this midpoint, how do we get there? Well, let's give the midpoint also a vector associated to it. Let's call it, of course, little m. So now we've sort of replaced the points with vectors emanating from the origin. That's good because we can do vector arithmetic. In particular, to get m, M is going to be, how do we get M from this situation? Well, to go from here to here, we can go from here to here first, and then we go 
from here to here. So m is equal to the vector a plus the vector a m, which is the vector a plus one half of the vector c. All right? That's very important to understand. To get to this midpoint, we're taking the vector a and taking one half of c because we're assuming that m is halfway between here. So this is just c over 2. And now observe that since c is equal to b minus a, we can rewrite this as a plus 1 half b minus a. And then when we can rearrange, write this out as 1 half of b minus 1 half of a, so we get a plus 1 half of b minus 1 half of a, and that gives us then all together 1 half of a plus 1 half of b. All right, so this is a kind of a general formula that we've just established. So let's write it here. So we've established that the vector for the midpoint, m, is actually obtained from the vectors of the endpoints by taking their average. And this is in complete generality. This works in the plane, but it also works in three-dimensional space. In fact, the same argument works in higher dimensions too, if we really wanted to do it. Okay, so let's now apply this general thinking to this particular case. All right. So now the solution to our problem, having done these preliminaries, how do we get the midpoint? Well, the uh, the coordinate vector of the midpoint m is, we just said it's m, which is 1 half of the coordinate vector for the first point, which is 2, 3, minus 1, plus 1 half of the coordinate vector for the second one, which is 4 minus 5, 7. Or m equals, taking the average of those things, so it's 1 half of 6 minus 2 and 6, which is the vector 3 minus 1, So that's the coordinate vector for the midpoint, and therefore the midpoint itself is m, which is equal to 3 minus 1, 3. All right, so there's the midpoint of the, the segment. And notice that it's really just the average of the two coordinates, just the sum divided by 2. All right, now let's have a look at this second part, which is a little bit trickier. So now we're looking for, let's on the same diagram, a point Q, also on this line AB, so that B lies between A and Q. So Q is on this side somewhere. Oops, we should, we should stand there somewhere and such that B times Q is three times as long as AB. So here's AB, and we want to take something that's three times that much, okay, maybe we'll probably go down here somewhere, okay, and we're looking for a point Q down here. Let me put it in red so we don't get confused. Okay, there it is there. So to get Q, what do we do? To get Q. Well, let's think about the coordinate vector for Q. So the coordinate vector for Q is this vector, little q, that joins the origin to Q. So suppose 
its coordinate vector is q. So then how could we get q? Well, q is equal to, we go there, and then we have to go this vector c, and then we're supposed to go three times as far. So q is equal to a plus c plus three times c. Okay, this is in general. Here's a, there's the vector c, and we're supposing that this is another copy of c, and here's another copy of c, and here's another copy of c. That's what we mean when we say that this segment is three times this one. Well, altogether, this is QA plus 4 times C, which is, again, just in generality, it's A plus 4 times B minus A for a total of minus 3A plus 4B. That's an interesting uh, formula that works no matter what the points A and B happen to be. So we get this interesting formula that's valid in general, that this point Q has coordinate vector Q, which is given by this combination minus 3A plus 4B. So in our particular situation, we have Q equals minus 3A was the vector 2, 3, minus 1, plus 4 times the vector B, which is 4 minus 5, a 7. So we have to compute that combination. And what do we get? Minus 6 plus 16 is 10. Minus 9 minus 20 is minus 29. And 3 plus 28 is, I guess, 31. And so therefore, we act the actual point, therefore, Q is equal to the point 10 minus 29, 31. I'm going to make one uh, interesting comment here that's uh, quite useful. So notice that this point Q, which is a linear combination of the vectors A and B, the linear combination has coefficients minus 3 and 4, which happen to add up to 1. Okay? And that's a particular characteristic that's satisfied by all the points on this line. They all have the property that they're multiples of A and B, where the sum of the coefficients is 1. That, in fact, characterizes that line. It's a very useful way of thinking about points on a line. If the multiples happen to be between 0 and 1, then we're actually inside the segment. If one of them is negative, like we have here, then we're on one side or on the other. This is called the affine combination, sometimes called convex combinations. It's a very powerful and useful uh, tool that uh, vector geometry gives us.